May God bless you all. In today's sharing, I'm going to share with you the life of Margarita Okiena, or better known as the mother of Don Bosco. An event from her childhood shows in a flash from which would Margarita Okiena was cut. War reigned in the land, and as the nine-year-old was home alone one day, enemy soldiers came to her parents' farm and drove their horses to the open floor of the barn, where they put them to eating the family's good harvested oats. Margarita begged the intruders to be considerate of the meager harvest. The soldiers, however, laughed and acted as if they didn't understand her dialect. In response, the fearless girl took a pitchfork and chased the horses out of the barn. Of such form was Margarita Okiena, even as a child, and so she stayed her entire life, determined, courageous, and energetic. In 1812, at the age of 24, Margarita married a widower who brought with him a nine-year-old son and his sickly elderly mother. She herself gave birth to two more sons. Just five years after the wedding, her husband died after four days of illness. The young widow worked doubly, hard to maintain the family's farm, family's small farming operation. She plowed, planted, reaped, and banded the bundles, loaded them onto the wagon, brought them home, trashed the grain, and brought the corn to the silo, all by herself. The excessive work and cares in no way hindered Margarita in her care of the elderly mother-in-law, whom she unreservedly submitted to, or her stepson and her, two, her own two children all of whom she loved equally. The stepson, who later became an exemplary individual, gave her a lot of grief. He was surely envious and complained unfairly that Margarita put her own children before him. Without her husband, it became difficult to keep the boys happy. As Margarita's training was inspired by a warm kind-heartedness tempered with firmness and quiet strength, so she always prevailed when the children were guilty of wrongdoing. On a wall in the living room hung as a constant warning the rod which, though seldom used, sometimes became active. Margarita's upbringing of the children was completely and entirely focused on religion. Above all, she taught them to be aware of the omnipresence of God. She would show the children that God sees everything, both what is taught and what is done. She permitted the children to play with other children, but she took care to say, yes, just play, but remember that God sees you. She read in the face of one of the boys that he was angry, so she whispered in his ear, God sees even your most secret thoughts. Experience taught her that to pardon a naughty child whom she knew had been lying, she would confront him face to face. Before the liar could say a word, she would say, Do not speak except thereby to think that God sees you. In this way, Margarita impressed deeply on the boys the awareness of the presence of God. It would be wise to heed the mother who raises her children to have such a well-formed conscience. Once she had been wronged by a wayward neighborhood boy in a major way and in public, pitying the condition of his soul, Margarita said to her boys, if I knew that you would turn out like that, I would ask God to let you die on the spot. From the mouth of a mother, such words sound harsh, but just for that reason, 
they guide so much more effectively the inclinations of the children away from the evil and towards the good. One day Margarita's heartfelt wish, which she had so long cherished in silence, seemed to be fulfilled. Hans, the youngest, confided to her that he would like to become a priest. In that instant the mother's heart fluttered for joy, but from the lips of the prudent woman came the dry words, Priest, priest, that is quickly said, why do you want to become a priest? With this almost too sharp reply, the short talk abruptly ended, and the nine-year-old Hans had in the meantime to think about the reasons he wanted to become a priest. Margarita was far removed from favoring the youngest because of his plans, for it was clear to her from the beginning that the vocation must prove itself, and the trials to test it did not wait long. Scarcely had the now twenty-year-old stepbrother gotten wind of the matter that he immediately moved with all his strength against the plan. Like a little spoiled child, he teased Hans about it every day. Only the Lord allows such laziness. Would Hans be happy as such a Lord too? Priests are lazy. Thereafter, the eldest no longer called the youngest by name, but insulted him whenever he found an opportunity to do so, with the mocking calls, Little Lord or Lord Doctor. So persistently and wild was the stepbrother that Margarita advised Hans to seek food, shelter and money elsewhere. Lord Jesus, we thank you for the example of such women like Margarita Okiena. We ask you that you instill in the hearts of women, mothers, this love, this love for you. Help them to understand that to offer their children as consecrated to you, they are really and fruitfully giving you the greatest glory that is offering then sons and daughters as a gift of love to you we ask you that those women who really pray to you with an ardent heart with an open heart with a sincere heart grant them the grace of having one of their children sons or daughters consecrated to you in Jesus' name, in Jesus' blood, and the Holy Spirit, I pray. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou amongst women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners now and in the hour of our death. Amen. And may God Almighty bless you and protect you. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen.